Guess what? <laughs> Joe Biden is naming Nera Tandon to his cabinet, to the Office of Budget. And, uh, and she's really excited <laughs> about being the first woman of color to be nominated because that's a really big deal. Yeah. Then I have been nominated for this position as a woman of color. <laughs> I mean, why would you on purpose talk like that? Uh, when I am, I am the CEO of uh, something very important, Think Tank. <laughs> you know, every time I do hear her speak, I, I often think it's a joke. As soon as you, and I know, I think you have a couple clips here today. Look at that when picture. I say thank you. Even that picture just screams, hey, I know, right? I'm totally not qualified. <laughs> By the way, Nara Tandon is Biden's latest middle finger to the left. Joe Biden has picked Nara Tandon, a fierce critic of Bernie Sanders and the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, to head the Office of Management and Budget. The move is just the latest sign that Biden will govern from the center right, offering nothing to the left. The center right? <laughs> That's the right. <laughs> yes. That's straight up corporation right wing bullshit. And by the way, Nara Tandon is worse than a middle finger to the left. She's an eviction notice. <laughs> She's a kick to the groin. And before you know it, all your stuff is on fire. <laughs> Nara Tandon has made it her life's work to make sure you can't have the basic necessities of life that other countries take for granted. That's what Nara Tandon, that's what she spent her whole life doing, denying you basic services that the rest of the world takes for granted. And, I, and just so you know who she is, so who is Nara Tandon? So here's what, why they want to kill Julian Assange, because he reveals their war crimes. So this is an email from Faz Shakur, who was Bernie Sanders' old uh, campaign manager. This is before he was Bernie's campaign manager, and they were all working together. Bernie got his campaign manager. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Oh, fuck. So this is when they're all working together, and... Uh, she was very pro. Nira Tanner was pro Libyan war, right? She was for the illegal invasion and the and watch what else she was for. So this is Faz Shakur. He he says, I don't think it's fair that we create our own domestic problems and then we ask other nations to pay for it. You see the adverse incentive problem here, right? If we think we can make money off an incursion, we'll do uh, we'll do it. That's a serious policy messaging moral problem for our foreign policy, I think. So he's responding to Nera Tandon, who said this about what we should do in Libya with their oil. She said, and we've reported this before, which is why Nera Tandon then tweets bad faith attacks at us because we revealed her. And this is what we revealed. She advocated for stealing Libya's oil. And here's how she said it. She said, we have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of that deficit. Engage in the world, that, that's code speak for uh, bomb the shit out of poor brown countries and steal their natural resources. Engage in the world. So like well, we engaged in Iraq, we engaged in Afghanistan, we engaged in Somalia, we engaged in the, we engage, this is what they call engaging, bombing the shit out of poor people who can't defend themselves and then stealing their natural resources. So she says, most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of our deficit. If we want to continue to engage in the world, bomb brown people and steal their shit, uh, gestures like having oil rich countries partially pay us back doesn't seem crazy to me. So what she's saying is let's make let's tell make Libya pay us for invading them and overturning their uh, government and stealing their shit. Let's make Libya pay us for invading them and turning their country into a failed state with open slave markets. Let's make them pay us for doing that for them. So what she's doing is she's advocating a war crime. That's what Naratandon is. That's who Joe Biden is. Joe Biden, they did Libya. Do you now get it? So there it is. That's, that's what these things say. 
So that's, she says, we have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of that deficit. If we want to continue to engage in the world, gestures like having oil-rich countries, Libya, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, you just keep naming them, that let's, let's, let's make them pay. Who else says that? Besides Joe Biden's we latest bomb pick. the oil, take the oil. Bomb the oil, take the oil. Just take it, right? I've been saying that for four years, and they were saying, oh, that would be... In fact, Obama put some general on television saying, no, that wouldn't work. Why wouldn't it work? ISIS is making its money from the oil. And some bad banking stuff, too, which I... The rebels were. But I'll tell you what, I'm only interested in Libya if we take the oil. If we don't take the oil, I have no interest in Libya. So your Middle East policy is basically guided by our interest in oil. My li- Middle East, yeah, which are... Pro- I always heard that. I always heard that when we went into Iraq, we went in for the oil. I said, ah, that sounds smart. Except we never did. So we- Look, Nira Tandon's email came to life. The president said, let's take their oil in Libya. Just what she advocated. Isn't that amazing? Donald Trump and her have the exact same foreign policy. Isn't that awesome? They're just the same kind of crazy maniac war criminals. Isn't that awesome? You just voted that out. Oh, I mean, you voted it in. For for four years, near a tanned and spirit animal was President Trump. The difference between Trump and Neera Tannen is she keeps it in the emails she hopes nobody sees. He just says it on television, <laughs> which is why they hate him. Oh, by the way, executions, tortures, and slave markets persist in Libya. That's from the UN. That's what we did. That's what she advocated for. That's what Donald Trump advocated for. That's what Joe Biden did. Joe Biden did this. Him, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. Tandon is a close ally of Hillary Clinton. The Center for American Progress, which Tandon leads, the Center for American Progress, was founded by John Podesta, a key figure in the Clinton machine. And can I just say the nicest thing I can say about John Podesta is that he didn't start a pedophile ring in Washington, D.C. That's the nicest thing I can say about him. John Podesta a key figure in the Clinton machine, the head of the Center for American Progress, which now Nera Tandon is the head of. Podesta is the chairman of Hillary's 2016 campaign, and he previously served as the chief of staff under Bill Clinton. With his brother, Tony, John Podesta also co-founded the Podesta Group, a public affairs firm that has lobbied for Saudi Arabia, among other countries. So that's who these people are. And now when WikiLeaks revealed uh, that... Even inside Hillary Clinton's campaign, Neera Tandon thought Hillary Clinton was nuts and a horrible candidate. So they revealed this. Those WikiLeaks emails revealed it, which is why Hillary Clinton wants to kill Julian Assange. Same thing with Neera Tandon. And watch Chris Cuomo asks her about that. And watch how she sounds just like Trump. Specifically, uh, one of the ones that you wrote, uh, put up the email. Her inability to just do a national interview and communicate genuine feelings of remorse and regret is now, I fear, becoming a character problem. Now, this is interesting to hear that inside, you guys were having the same discussion that people were having outside. So I was saying the same thing about Hillary Clinton in 2016 as they were saying inside. And people were attacking me for saying it. <laughs> but they turns out they were saying the exact same thing inside her campaign. And now he's going to ask her about that. Hey, why? What? So what happened when you said these things to Podesta and others? Where did you guys come to a conclusion about why Clinton had such a hard time just owning that she did something wrong with the email server? You know, I I know that Russia and other forces would love us to have a debate. This is exactly what they want. They want us to have a debate about the internal structure of Hillary's campaign, what's true, what's not true. And I'm just not going to play that. I'm sorry. The reality here is I is that as Marco Rubio said, we have a Russian government, uh, the Russian government, a foreign government trying to essentially impact this election. But Nira, and using, and I'm sorry, Chris, using the American media to do that. And Nira, so it, it, I, any email I sent 
was yeah. personal from my personal account right. to someone else's personal account. I am not on the campaign. I am was a an informal outside advisor with right. my own thoughts. And so, honestly, I'm just telling you right now, Chris, that the reality of this is that I think Marco Rubio is right about this, that people should not be using this as <laughs> weaponizing the emails or Zero, if this email personal emails of anyone and sending Kelly well, Conway to Dave Bossy. You would be giving me all your deepest thoughts about uh, it right now. Uh, in, you don't you know, like Chris, it because it's your email. You're ducking Chris, it. You're not having high ground Chris, here. Chris, uh, that's absolutely false. I actually would not be doing that. And you can see in other in other areas where emails have been used on any other issue, I've taken the same position. Well, when his taxes came out, the Clinton campaign couldn't stop talking about them, right? Those were leaked, was that, was that, right? Were, Technically, this, that, that oh, information. Yeah. Actually, that is a really important point, Chris. I yeah. agree with you. These emails were not leaked. They well, were I'm stolen. I'm saying, what's the difference they how they stolen. come out? That's, that's a separate issue. The emails say <laughs> what they say. You just said leaked. You just said leaked. Yeah, I know. I'll say it you. again. Leaked. But what and I'm saying is that's leaked. a separate issue. <laughs> it is not a separate <laughs> issue. How these, how this got, how this happened was a foreign government. And I'm, you don't listen to me. Listen to Marco Rubio. No, I know. And I our intelligence that they were agencies. Hacked. I and understand that they were hacked, Europe, but you have to understand to the, uh, to not just to me, but to the outside. <laughs> your emails are what they are. Now, if you say I never said this. That's something different. If you I say, say this I isn't don't. me, I didn't write that, then that's that's a legitimate basis. But otherwise, it just seems like you're ducking it because you don't want to own what you said. Boy, when Chris Cuomo can dismantle you, Ugh. that's like Barry Weiss on Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> when Chris Cuomo can destroy you that easily. You said toady. You said toady. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know. Look it up. Jamie, look it up. Did I say toady? <laughs> I love what Chris Cuomo said. Is it, you're just dodging it. If you said didn't say that, that's one thing. But you did say it, right? And then it. Nair Tanda, by the way, has the personality of a stapler. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> so here's her, here's Nair Tanda coming at Jelena Sons. Now, I already showed you that she's a war criminal, right? She advocates for war crimes. That's Nair Tanda. Soon to be in Joe Biden's cabinet. Nir Tannen says there are many cultists on this site, but the Assange cultists are the worst. Assange was the agent of a proto-fascist state, Russia, to undermine democracy. That is fascist behavior. Anyone on the left should abhor what he did, not celebrate it. No, no, Nir, you are the fasc fascist. We already pro revealed that. And the reason why you hate Julian Assange is because he exposed your fascism. Huh. That's that's your problem. Breaking, Iraqi parliament votes to remove U.S. troops from Iraq. She tweets out, which entities wants American troops totally removed from Iraq? Iran and ISIS. So she's always pro-war. Do you get you catch on this? Oh, if you're if you're for us pulling out of Iraq, you must be on the side of ISIS. Do you see the kind of person she is? And here's she's in lockstep with Bill Kristol. He says serious conservatives, responsible moderates, and hard-headed liberals should want a tough-minded OMB head. OMB is where cabinet secretaries' ill-considered projects go to die, where programs are evaluated, where trade-offs are made. Nara Tandon is the right person for the job. Wow. Reminder that Bill Kristol <laughs> and the neocons are always wrong about everything. Congress should investigate Nair Tandon's ties to foreign governments, especially to the United Arab em Emirates, which gave Tandon's organization millions of dollars year after year during its war with Yemen. What was that money buying? Here's Nair Tandon. This is, she did this a week bef before the election. She tweets this out. That this letter has been written by so many I admired, including John LeCair, Oz Cuttery, and Tom Holland. It's a tragedy. Labor's anti-Semitism problem should have been rooted out long ago. So she's pretending that Jeremy Corbyn... So she, there she is undermining progressives. That's what that is. She's smearing them as anti-Semites. That's, that's, that's what she does. Never forget... That as Nera Tandon spent the last few months hysterically browbeating everyone on the left to vote for Joe Biden because lesser evilism, she posted this just four days before the UK's general election. These vile ghouls have no principles, only interests.
Think Progress to, uh, to unionize with Writers Guild of America. Why is that? Why are you telling me about this, Jimmy? Think Progress. You remember that news site, Think Progress? I do. Think Progress was run by the Center for American Progress. The Center for American Progress is run by Nira Tandon. Nira Tandon shut down Think Progress because they formed a union. That's who Nira Tannen is. The Center for Progress? Center for American Progress <laughs> shut down Think Progress, their news site, after they joined the union. Nira Tannen also disbanded Think Progress after they unionized. Haven't seen that mentioned in her laundry list of terrible behavior. Well, we just mentioned it. Thank you, Alan. Hey, by the way, statement of Third Way President, or, you know that organization Third Way? Well, they're for Nira Tannen. The statement of Third Way President John Cowan of, on the new Biden administration personnel announcements, he says, if press reports are accurate, the president-elect continues to build a White House team of enormous talent and diversity. Nira Tannen, a fellow think tank president, will be a fantastic OMB director. She is battle-tested policy expert who is widely respected for her passion and intelligence. She's a fascist. She wants to... Uh, prosecute journalists for doing journalism, and she wants to steal natural resources from poor brown countries. That's what she wants to do. That's who she is. So, of course, the third way likes her. Do you know who the third way Democrats are? Here's the third. The ideas that Wall Street Democrats at third way have pushed. Here's who the third way Democrats are. Third way. The third way. <laughs> they they oppose the $15 an hour minimum wage. They are for cuts to Social Security. They're for Wall Street deregulation. They're for the TPP and job-killing trade deals. They're for opposition to Medicare drug price negotiations. That's who the third way is. The third way refers to another uh, method helping Democrats lose. That's all it is. So that third way's idea is let's be weak. Let's be pretentious. Wait, I have a third way. <laughs> let's just be exactly the same as our opponents. That's the third way. How Nira Tandon works. You want to know how Nira Tandon works? She works surrounded by flies feeding off the souls of children. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. That's how she works. By the way, here's some more. Here's some more. WikiLeaks reveals. Oh, this is an ad from the from the, the Podesta's emails. Wow. They talk about how they influence the press. That's what this is about. How when you watch the news or read an article, you think it's the... No, the journalists are in bed with the politicians. And that's what this reveals. And especially at the bottom. Yes. He also thinks the brown women... brown. He also thinks the brown, meaning brown people, and women, pundits, can shame the New York Times and others on social media. So cultivating people like Joan Walsh, Matt Inglesias, 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 uh, Perry Bacon, Greg Sargent, to defend her is helpful. Defend who? Hillary. That's who they were cultivating to defend Hillary Clinton. This is what this also reveals. This is Neera Tandon saying this. Near attendance that brown and women pundits can shame the New York Times and others on social media. So cultivating Joan Walsh. So that's this is what she's saying. She's saying let's let's smear people and try to and try to make them uncomfortable for telling the truth about Hillary Clinton. That's what that is. So let's run a false narrative. Let's try to pressure the New York Times and then we'll work. These are the journalists we can work. Joan Walsh, Maggie Glace. Like, oh, that's what we can. That, that's just for starters. They can be emboldened. For what it's worth, I pushed PR to do this a year ago. Biden picks budget director who pushed Social Security cuts. That's near Tandon. And here she is advocating for entitlement. There's a viewer here who wants you to take us deeper into entitlements mm -hmm. uh, by Twitter. Ms. Tanda, do you know what the president means when he says entitlements are on the table? Any specifics and anything you would endorse? Yeah, I mean, so there are a range of entitlements um, that, you know, I think when we're talking about entitlements, we're talking about Medicare, 
Social Security, Medicaid. These are programs that... Okay, these are not entitlements, Nira. Those are programs that taxpayers have paid into their entire lives. Okay, just so you know. Um, that uh, people receive support because of the status that they have. So when after 65, you get funding from Social Security and Medicare. Um, actually, it's grown, it's going getting older for Social Security. But uh, and you know the president has 300 billion dollars in his budget in cuts in Medicare. Um, that comes on top of cha- cuts in. She's bragging about it. She's bragging about it that they have 300 billion dollars in cuts. To Medicare. Did you hear that? His budget in cuts in Medicare. And, you know, the president has $300 billion in his budget in cuts in Medicare. Um, that comes on. She said $300 billion. It's cuts in Medicare. And she's bragging about it. They're, again, they're not entitlements. They're programs American taxpayers have paid into their entire lives. Denying you things like social security and health care in your old age, that's not taking away entitlements. It's stealing from you. So there she is advocating for cutting. She's advocating for cutting Medicare and social security entitlements. Here's her boss doing the same thing. Senator, we have a deficit. We have social security and Medicare looming. The number of people on social security and Medicare is now 40 million people. It's going to be 80 million in 15 years. Would you consider... Looking at those programs, age of eligibility, absolutely. cost of living, put it all on the absolutely. table. Absolutely, look, absolutely. the American to. people aren't I mean, stupid. You know, it's one of the things that my, you know, the, the political advisors say to me is, whoa, don't touch that third. Look, the American people aren't stupid. It's a real simple proposition. We have to do, we, you and I were talking about. Okay, bi- I don't even, this is his longest way of saying we have to cut Social Security and Medicare. That's when he goes into this long story about how we have to all protect each other when we cut Social Security and Medicare. Uh, as COVID cases spike, Joe Biden hires Neera Tandon, who questioned the CDC recommendations not to congregate in large groups and pushed in-person voting in March. She quickly reversed her position when belief in science advantaged her chosen candidate. But that's near a tandem. And encouraging people to go vote during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then over here, uh, it's her saying, look, they're willing to have people die to go vote when it when it served her. So these so it's complete flip flop. She's willing to sacrifice people's lives whenever it serves her politically. The Center for American Progress staff was shocked after near a tandem named the anonymous harassment victim in an all staff meeting. So. Joe Biden ended the hashtag Me Too movement. I don't know if you realize that, but it's over. And Joe Biden ended that because he had a credible accusation uh, and everybody just ignored it. C- completely credible and everybody just ignored it. And th- there was a, a, a woman um, who made a sexual harassment charge at the Center for American Progress. And Neera Tandon outed her. Not supposed to do that. The meeting comes after BuzzFeed News reported on allegations of sexual harassment and retaliation against those who reported at the progressive organization. People audibly gasped when she did gasped when she did that. So when she outed that woman, people audibly gasped when Neera Tandon outed the sexual harassment victim. And of course, Joe Biden picks her. Neera Tandon is going to create an absolutely devastating austerity budget. Then she's going to call it the budget for a progressive future. And Democrats are going to be so into it. Here's Neera Tandon doing a bad faith attack (laughs) against Jimmy Dore. So Carlos Maza, who is that uh, corporate tool who works for Vox and is a gaslighter, and uh, likes to deplatform people who uh, criticize him. He was saying, so I have a pretty thick skin when it comes to online harassment, but something has been really bothering me. So that's when he uh, tried to get Steven Crowder deplatformed from YouTube because Steven Crowder was making fun of him. 
in a homophobic way, according to Carlos Maza, in the racist and a homophobic way, according to Carlos Maza. So Nera Tandon tweets that out and tries to pretend that what I'm doing when I criticize mm. her being a war criminal advocating for war crimes is the same thing as Steven Crowder criticizing Carlos Maza in a homophobic, racist way. She's So that's, that's not just some, that's a powerful person completely lying about me. On social media, they never have to take this tweet down. That's completely a lie. I was coming at her for her war advocating for stealing Libya's oil. Carlos Maza was being compl- was complaining about being attacked for his uh, sexuality and his race. I wasn't attacking you for your sexuality and your race. I was attacking you for what for advocating for war crimes. But she wants to confuse you. That's what that's called a bad faith attack. That's called a smear. Important threat. Jimmy Dore has created multiple videos to attack me. I ignore them. Really? Do you ignore them when you're watching them or are you ignoring them when you're tweeting about them? Where does the ignoring come in? I don't think you know what that word ignore means. You can't even tweet about me. You can't even tweet about me with making one huge transparent fucking lie. She can't even make one tweet about me without a huge fucking lie right in the middle of it. And there it is. I ignore them. Really? That's why you're tweeting about them? I ignore them, but they can be both vicious and ludicrous. How do you know they're vicious and ludicrous if you're ignoring them? Oh, that's right. You're a fucking transparent bad liar. It's an important thread. This thread is so important, I need to make it about me. (laughs) It's about me, really. Isn't it nice to know I bugged the shit out of her? Isn't it nice to know that she hates that? And now, by the way, everybody knows that she advocated for stealing Libya's oil. We, we've been the one broadcasting that at the top of our lungs for fucking how many years now? Enough to make her do this. And now everybody knows about it. And so now everybody's reporting on it. So this is called the Streisand effect. Because when she tweeted this out, I did another video about her tweeting this. It got a half a million views. So that her trying to do, so what their only game is they try to discredit Jimmy Dore. Anybody who's onto their bullshit, you have to try to discredit them. And that's what this is. You try to say Jimmy's a racist. Jimmy's a sexist. Jimmy's a this. Jimmy's a grit. Whatever the fuck it is. You try to, you never attack my, my points. Never come at my opinions. Never come at my points. Never come at the substance of my arguments. They uh, this is the all they got. That's all they got. <laughs> Jimmy's a sexist. Jimmy's a you know who else is a sexist? Bernie Sanders. You know who else said people are sexist? Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> That's what they do. By the way, I want to show you this. So this is near attendance Twitter feed. And I don't know if you know, she said she's the president of Center for American Progress. She's a she's a progressive. Now, what is that? Now, what does it say? She's the president of Center for American Progress. Huh. She's a liberal. She's a liberal now. She used to be a she used to be a progressive. Now she's a liberal. Ha <laughs> ha. Love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. And I cried when they shot Timmy Rice. Was like I lost a child of mine. But Colin Kaepernick's just disrespectful. And most of the cops are just fine. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. You guys get it. (laughs) My president, Barack Obama, the entire country adored. He brought us our hope and our change, and 30 million left uninsured. And I don't care about fracking or drone strikes Cause that ain't gonna happen next door So love me, love me, love me I'm a liberal (laughs) 
Now I vote for the Democratic Party Cause they have the better deal And I have lots of love for the Clintons Always have and I always will And we need to believe all women Unless it's about Biden or Bill <laughs> So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. Now I used to be young and impulsive, but I'm not that way anymore. I've read everything by Marx and by Chomsky, even listened to Jimmy Dore. <laughs> But I've grown older and wiser Haven't I blocked you on Twitter before? So love me, love me, love me I'm a liberal yeah! She went from progressive to liberal And now you know the rest of the story Hey everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video. <laughs> 